Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Creature Caster. Today, we are painting a huge miniature with the new cuttlefish base colors. I painted the warrior dragon in just a couple of days and I use only cuttlefish colors. The first day was just basic airbrush sketching of the base colors of the warrior dragon. I started with some purple colors because this will make my painting a little bit more efficient simply because I won't need to paint the really deep crevices and undersides of the model. By painting it purple, it would serve as the shade or shadow color of the whole model. Airbrushing is the most efficient way to paint the base colors of any miniature or any model for that matter. However, the new cuttlefish base colors made the painting extra efficient. The best way to describe the new cuttlefish base colors is that they are airbrush ready paints. They are true airbrush ready paints. Most if not all of airbrush ready paints that I've used before are not really airbrush ready paints. You have to thin them a little bit more so that you could airbrush them with a 0.2 or 0.3 nozzle. Although you could use a really big 0.5 nozzle for base colors and it's advisable to jack up like the air pressure to around 30 PSI so that you don't have to thin the other previous airbrush paints that I have used. The cuttlefish base colors on the other hand are actually really pre-thinned as an airbrush paint. So you don't really have to you don't have to thin them at all and you could like lower your PSI to the usual pressure of around 15 to 20 PSI and you just have to pour the paint on the top of your airbrush. No thinning simply meant that my airbrushing, my painting of this warrior dragon was made extra efficient. Since I don't really have to think about the thinning, I don't have to think about how to properly use these paints for airbrushing, the painting was really smooth and I mean the process was really smooth flowing and I was just focused on what colors to use during the painting. The standard cuttlefish colors that I'm using right now in the video requires a little bit of thinning though. You thin this paint roughly around 3 parts paint and 1 part Merlin's medium or water. After the first day of painting or basically a few hours, we have a really nice painted warrior dragon. I painted all of the base colors of the warrior dragon and even the wing part. So it's just a matter of painting the details and of course the base. Now on the second day of painting, I realized I need to do a little bit of gimmick. Because even though I paint the warrior dragon into a nice like really iconic green skin dragon and yellow ochre belly, it will look a bit ordinary. Although the model itself is very nice and striking. However, I have to add like a bit of gimmick like this one. So this gimmick like the burning chest and the mouth is basically stolen from smog of the Hobbit. So after the painting, this will show like the buildup of heat on the chest area of the dragon and of course the mouth before it blows like a really nice flame. Except for the white paint from the like the standard cuttlefish colors, the painting of the rest of the model or the OSL is with the new cuttlefish base. So much like the sketching of the base colors, the painting of the OSL was made extra efficient because of the no thinning property of the new paints. Although I did not record it on film after painting the OSL here, 
I did some quick dry brushing with the standard cuttlefish colors. I also did like a quick glazing of some of the crevices of the model. I used charred remains, the deep, and even femme fatale and some other violet and purple colors from the standard cuttlefish color line. The quick glazes and shades and sometimes a bit of wash, I added more Merlin's medium to create washes from cuttlefish, gave more color depth and contrast to my painting. After the quick glazes and after a few more shades to the model, I then just need to finish up by painting more details like the teeth and the eyes to finish up this really big, I can't state that enough, this really big resin casted miniature. I used a mixture of the new cuttlefish base colors and the old cuttlefish standard paints in the painting of the details. It's just a matter of making sure that I create contrast, especially in the mouth. So last minute, I decided that the tip of the tongue or basically the whole tongue should be a bit more red and purple at the tip so that I have a really like a really focused glow inside the nostrils of the dragon. The teeth were also made a little bit brighter because they're teeth. Now before I reveal, I just want to thank Creature Caster for this awesome opportunity to paint this huge miniature. So I said I painted this in just a couple of days simply because I have a deadline. However, this beautiful warrior dragon deserves a week, a month, or even a couple of months of love, of painting time. There are a ton of details in this miniature. You could pick up all the claws and all the horns and really paint it nicely. And of course, the base deserves a bit more time. I just dry brushed the base and then painted like gold and then and, and some metallics so that it kind of pops out. But again, this model deserves more painting time so that it looks extra beautiful. Lastly, if you have an airbrush or you love airbrushing, I super highly recommend the new Cuttlefish base colors. I am not paid to say this, but the new cuttlefish base colors are truly pre-thin for the airbrush. They're extra opaque, their coverage are insane, and they're extra matte. So basically, they're the best airbrush paints, airbrush-ready paints that I have ever used. I hope you like this video. That's it, Pansit. 